May I request everybody to uh, put on their videos, please? Good. <laughs> it's lovely to see you all <laughs> while talking. Okay. Kindly keep yourself mute and keep your videos on. Okay. Entire screen share. Mm -hmm. So, good evening, everyone. I welcome you all on behalf of Dr. Dhanipka's homeopathic child care to this another session that we have kept for our little ones. So, winter care for children. Okay. So winter is a lovely season, right? Don't we all like winters? We all love to get cozy, sit, on, sit in our comforters and enjoy a nice family time or a movie time and enjoy a winter evening, right? But few of us, especially our children, suffer some few things like few diseases during winter. Uh, doesn't uh, do most of us uh, find our children going to school completely all right, but they come down sick when they are back from school or when they go down to play, they are perfectly okay, but they come up with a nose block, right? Do we all experience that? Yes. Yeah. And also uh, when they go to sleep, they are perfectly fine, but in the middle of night, or suddenly they got, get, get up in the morning with a blob nose or red eyes or fever. So these all are very frequent that we see in winter, especially in cold and dry weather for our children. So let's see why our children face such issues in winters. So it, what exactly happens in winter is in lower temperature, the body is not as effective in fighting the infections. The cold air, uh, in cold air, our body's metabolism is reduced. So the body's immune system is weakened during, uh, during the winters. The cold air that enters our nose and our re upper respiratory tract uh, makes the spread of infections and diseases more frequently than in any other temperature. That's why the winters are the, the main reason for spread of infection in winters is the lower temperature. Also, because of closed environments, so when there are winters, so we as parents, we fear our children to uh, send them outside to play. So mostly our children are indoors. And when our children are indoors and all the doors and windows are closed, so in a closed environment, the spread of infection is fast because the ventilation is not proper. Also for children who are in daycare, because they are in contact of many other children, they are in a closed environment and the temperature is also low. So the spread of infection is high for children who go in daycare and who start going to school in this weather. So now let us look what are the common ailments that our children face during winters. So one of the most commonest thing that happen to our children is a nose block. They go down to play, they get exposed to cold air or cold temperature and then they come back home with a nose block. Yes, and also nose block is, as a, is a result of sinusitis most of the times. Our sinuses are inflamed due to repeated infections or allergies. And the allergies are mostly, uh, the frequency of allergy is high in winters and in lower temperatures. And also in cases we have uh, seen that children have nose blocks because of polyps. Uh, so what are polyps? Polyps are just an overgrowth of the inner lining of our nose. So when this overgrowth takes place, the nose gets blocked and the child experiences a nose block. So we as parents at home, what can we do for our kids to relieve them from nose block? Especially it gets difficult for younger children, breastfeeding children. It gets difficult for them to feed uh, due to nose block. 
they cry and many a times we don't understand why they are crying so we should always look for a nose block so uh, we should raise their head in a and we should breastfeed in a proper position that the child is comfortable or use a cool mist vaporizer in winter so that because of the dryness also sometimes there is nose block so the nose block is released or we can give them steam for younger children who cannot take steam or who are afraid of steam what we can do is we can start a hot shower in a bathroom for around 5 minutes so all the bathroom is steamed up and we can uh, just hold them in the bathroom and uh, because of the mist the vapors the nose block will ease in up also what you can do is you can take a hot towel uh, not very hot you should take a towel that the child can bear and just put it in hot water squeeze and just put give a fermentation around the nose to ease up the nose block also nasal saline drops that come you can add 2 to 3 drops in each of the nostrils for the child that also eases up the nose block nasal sprays also you can use but nasal sprays are not recommended for children below 2 years of age and you are not supposed to use it very frequently just 2 to 3 sprays in a day for a week not more than that and also when your child is in nose block you have to give a lot of warm fluids or warm liquids to drink to ease up the nose block also a rubber suction bulb can help in case of very younger children another very uh, uh, important thing that comes up in winter is a sore throat so 20% of the sore throat is only bacterial rest 80% of the sore throat we have seen that is due to a viral infection or flus so the first symptom for flu is always a sore throat and it is majorly caused in cold weather due to uh, exposure to cold air it can also be caused due to cold drinks and repeated allergies so uh, in in sore throat also the tonsils get inflamed the inflammation of the tonsils takes place so what are tonsils tonsils are the pad of tissues that are just located behind our throat when it gets inflamed a child experiences sore throat repeated allergies also leads to tonsils many times it has seen that repeated sore throat or tonsillitis can also lead to swollen neck glands okay so what we can do for uh, throat pain or sore throat how we can ease the uh, sore throat in winters for our kids most important thing is you have to give complete rest to the child more he rests the better he gets stay hydrated give a lot of warm liquids uh, hot soups hot beverages to drink for a child and warm water warm uh, salt water gargles also helps use a humidifier or a vaporizer that eases the pain uh in case of severe sore throat generally a sore throat subsides if it's a viral infection it subsides within a week but if it takes a longer time or it happens with a fever or a rash or a difficulty in swallowing or breathing then you have to visit your doctor also many of the cold and flu and sore throat is also accompanied by ear infections so when you get a flu or when a child have a sore throat okay the infection spreads to the middle ear it is because of the inflammation of the uh, middle ear the ear drums gets uh, filled with fluid which leads to the pain repeated allergies cause it repeated the uh, flu causes it uh, due to cold exposure also the inflammation happens and it leads to an ear infection and it may many times be accompanied along with a throat pain so what you can do in case of ear pain you can make your child as comfortable as possible make the head elevated in a comfortable position give lots of warm fluid and warm uh, gargles and hot soups to drink and if if a baby is breastfeeding then give breastfeed uh, frequently and very important thing is avoid inserting anything inside the ears especially the q tips don't go and you know just go and uh, be cu- uh, curious to go and check inside that what is going on in a year in your child's ear always get it assessed with your doctor if it is accompanied with a fever take your child to the doctor immediately 
then cold and coughs are also very common in winters due to weather change due to cold expo exposure due to cold foods recurrent allergies many of uh, many children in winter experiences cold and cough and it is mainly because of the reduced immunity and it leads to sinusitis also so what can we do at home to ease cold and cough for our children complete rest is required staying hydrated homemade concoction and many other remedies dr kavita will share with you which uh, affects or which will assist your child in uh, uh, when your child is having cold or cough also keep your child on vitamins many times it is seen that when a child when uh, when there is recurrent allergies or when there is recurrent a uh, throat pain or when there is recurrent cough the child leads to it leads to bronchitis or bronchiolitis so what is bronchitis it is the inflammation of the tubes of our lungs so it happens due to repeated chest infections recurrent cough recurrent allergies and child tends to breathe rapidly so you have to be very careful when your child has a cough you have to check if the child has any uh, chest pain during coughing if he is getting difficult any difficulties there in breathing or he is getting fatigued tired while coughing or uh, while having a little activity if he is going out to play then coming back home tired so you need to get your child assessed to see whether he is in bronchitis or bronchiolitis so you have to check the respiration also the inhalation the child breathing in and breathing out if it is more than 30 times that means your child is breathless it may accompany with fatigue sore throat aches pains and cold colds also or a blocked nose so what you can do at home to make your child a little comfortable in bronchitis rest as mentioned in uh, earlier also and avoid any strenuous exercises or activities for your kids okay and what you can do is you can take a heating pad and keep on your child's chest and back to release the mucus and so the child will feel comfortable and always use a humidifier to moisten the air around him so that he feels a little comfortable lot of liquids and herbal teas and clear soups hot soups will also help one of the major issues that children uh, face in winters are the skin problems uh, so let us look into what the skin problem children face uh, the most important thing is the dry skin the children they suffer from itchy dry skin scaling of skin so what you can do in case of children who have very dry skin or there is scaling of skin you can avoid hot and long baths hot baths or hot shower tend to dry up the skin it tend to uh, your skin tend to lose moisture when your uh, skin is exposed to very hot baths and prolonged baths so avoid hot baths take short lukewarm baths to avoid skin getting dehydrated apply moisturizer as soon as you come out of the shower and uh, thick ointments or thick creams will affect more rather than just uh, lotions okay wear a lip balm for your kid if he is facing any chap chap lips or cracked lips and always use a gentle fragrance free allergen free skin products to avoid any further skin issues and also wear comfortable fabrics that don't irritate your skin if you if your child tends to wear a sweater make sure he is wearing some cotton clothes inside and then wearing a sweater also urticaria areas and allergies are very common in cold and dry season so what happens actually in winters is your skin gets dried up so dry skin leads to uh, hives so more your skin is dried high what are hives hives are pale red swelling uh, spots that come on your skin it itches burns and also stings sometimes and it may also be as a result of certain food that we eat in winters that may lead to some allergic reaction and in turn it the hives may appear on the skin but not all urticarias or allergies is as a result of uh, dry or uh, cold weather 
some articarias or hives are also because of some underlying disease or stress so if it is very recurrent and it comes again and again so you should get yourself assessed with a doctor so what to do in case of urticaria and hives how how you can manage it so you moisturize regularly use uh, apply damp cloth to the affected area that may relieve in the uh, itching burning and stinging that your child is going through uh, when he's developing a rash use a uh, invest in a humidifier if your child's skin is very dry it tends to crack it tends to burn use a humidifier that may uh produce some humidity in the uh, atmosphere so the skin soothens up also you can apply aloe vera gel aloe vera gel have many medicinal properties that can uh, soothen up your skin avoid always avoid tight fitting clothes clothes that rub your skin should be avoided because men, in many cases we have seen that uh, when the skin gets rubbed or you scratch your skin or when you towel yourself very vigorously that also leads to urticaria and hives another very uh, important thing that i want you, uh, to mention to you is many of us feel that our digestive system works uh, you know very well during winters but this is not the case in fact our metabolism reduces due to the cold temperature our digestive system slows down so uh, many of our children tend to get stomach pain because of the large portions that we give them or the fatty food or the sugary food so many children come up with a abdominal cra cramps or stomach colics okay which results mainly because of indigestion so what you can do for colics first of all you have to see whether it is due to indigestion so you have to give easy digestible food Uh, avoid solid foods give them uh, semi solid foods or liquids to ease their digest digestion okay and also a uh, gentle warm mas uh, oil massage on the stomach also helps in circular motions at times lying them on abdomen also helps but if your child complains of some localized abdominal pain if he's crying too much if the pains are continuous then kindly visit your doctor also similar uh, abdominal colics may also lead to vomiting and diarrhea in case of severe infections because infections tend to spread during winters it is very common so vomiting and diarrhea may happen two to three times uh, if your child vomits or if passes stools is normal but if it happens for more than 5 to 6 times then and or if your child is dull fatigued or dehydrated then you have to take him to a doctor so what are the uh, what are today's take away point uh, for this winters what you can take home through this uh, session right here is strengthen your child's immune system it is very important to strengthen their immune system so that your child does not fall sick frequently uh, make your child exercise regularly wash their hands with soap and water continuously to avoid infections also a good sleep is very much required to strengthen the immune system and a proper diet is also very essential so now dr kavita will take over to give you some light on nutrition <laughs> Can you put your cameras on, please, so I come to know whom I am speaking to. Everyone, can you please put your cameras on? Good, good, good to see all of you. Hi, Anupama. Hi, Shivani. Hi, Vinaya. Doctor Farzan, hello. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, so I will tell you few things which are very very important. Hi, Deepa. Hi, Nivedita. Yeah. So I will tell you very few things which are actually required for winters. Okay. So basic focus of us should always be the child should not fall sick when the temperature changes. जब हम लोग बोलते हैं ना कि weather change होता है तो बच्चे बीमार पड़ते ही हैं. 
may it be from winters to summers or maybe from summers to rainy seasons any change of weather and the child falls sick right so there are few good indian foods which will help you to try help your child to be in a good immune state wherein it will affect them but not so much so that their social life or their physical activities or their sleep or their food gets hampered okay few things i would like to share is in this winter season the most important things that is required for them are vitamins they are the micronutrients micronutrients form a part of the daily regular diet of your kids so micronutrients mein vitamins aa gaya iron aa gaya calcium aa gaya ye sab cheeze aa jati hai okay now usme kaun si kaun si cheeze kya deni hai i'll explain you more okay now during winters the child ka bmi is improved okay they have a larger bmi so you would have observed that your small kids eating more या फ्रीक्वेंटली खाने के लिए मांगते हैं या पीटिंग मोर ऑफ लिटिल सॉल्टी फूड्स या फूड व्हिच गेट्स डाइजेस्टेड वेरी फास्ट दिस इज द सीजन वेर यू कैन एक्चुअली गिव देम वेरी रिच एंड डेंस कैलोरी फूड्स सो ऑलवेज रिमेंबर दिस सीजन यू गिव देम गुड फूड व्हिच विल हेल्प देम टू यू नो स्टोर एनर्जी एंड कीप फॉर द नेक्स्ट कमिंग डेज थोड़ा सा लेजी भी हो जाते हैं बच्चे बट दैट अगेन बिकॉज ऑफ द वेदर कोजीनेस एंड एवरीथिंग दैट दे फॉर्म थोड़ा for a lazy but again food that you give them will be the major impact that will have them for their everyday activities okay so which fruits to give all fruits to give sardi hai khasi hai fever hai pet dard hai all fruits to give except for loose motions you are going to avoid few foods fruits but other than that all seasonal and locally grown fruits you can give okay just listen to it vinaya i will be sharing the ppt so don't worry i'll share it just listen to what i'm telling okay so all these fruits jaise abhi bahut se doctors rehte jo bolte oranges avoid karna hai sweet lime avoid karna hai okay few children jinko sweet lime oranges se hone se bhi zyada the way the fruits are preserved the way the fruits are grown up is a problem okay so the way you give fruits is very very important when the child has a very severe bout for those few days you can keep it on way otherwise you give them fruits regularly okay try to give them in any form the best form is to give it in the original form so aap usko cut karke do smoothie form mein do yeah you can make it into a milk shake and give them but in any form you give the most seasonal fruits are available hote hain okay all the fruits i tell this to all my patients all the fruits before giving them are to be soaked in warm water for minimum 20 minutes so this helps you to reduce the preservative up to 80 to 90% okay you put little rock salt into it soak your vegetables made banana made watermelon made strawberries again and then give them so this helps the children to have good amount of fruits aur isse unki takleef sardi khasi bhi kam hoti hai okay all these fruits will have small small nutrients in their quantity which are required in this season this is nature's way of giving natural vitamins and nutrients to the body so you don't need any other things if your children are eating fruits and everything so other few things which are very required for your child in this growing age will be all your uh, uh, what you say um, wheat hua jaggery a uh, wheat hua jowar hua the best thing the best uh, uh, cereal that helps your child in this season is bajra so winters mein ideally you should give bajra to your kids बाजरे का भाकरी बना के या पैनकेक्स बना के या बाजरे की खीर बनती है इन एनी फॉर्म अगेन सो यू कैन गिव बाजरा डो नॉट मिक्स बाजरा विथ एनी थिंग एल्स वेन यू आर गिविंग देम ग्रेन यू गिव देम वन ग्रेन एट द टाइम सो यू गिदर गिव देम थिंग्स विच आर मेड अप कम्प्लीटली ऑफ बाजरा और कम्प्लीटली ऑफ जवार और कम्प्लीटली ऑफ रागी ओके सो वन थिंग एट अ टाइम यू हैव टू गिव देम सेकेंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज योर नट्स ओके peanuts is something which you should regularly give to kids in this season it has lot of omega 3 it has lot of things which will help your child skin to keep it keep it normal moisture is mean natural moisturizer milega okay another most important five foods which you should include which are seasonal and available in this indian weathers to indian weathers bachcho ko available hai is your jaggery uh, how many of you know gond the edible gum yeah in yeah in maharashtrian families it is very common ki thandi vadhali ki va pregnancy zali ki apan dinka che ladu banavto so that is gond laddus okay i'll tell you about each and everything in details but these are the five things which you should always include in their children's diet 
so starting with jaggery jaggery will help the child to be to build up his immunity very strong this is not only for winters but jaggery in overall period will help you for your children to give them a very good to the immune system along with their iron boosting jaggery to the kid in many forms you can just give them plain jaggery water raat ko thoda sa bhigo dena you get organic jaggerys nowadays very easily available in the market usko raat ko bhigo ke morning empty stomach just give them a cup of water enough they get their uh, doses of iron and everything complete okay you can make a syrup out of and keep you can make powder out of it replace it with your sweeteners rather than using sugar anywhere which can be replaced you can use this many children like to eat jaggery with warm roti or parathas you know they use it as a jam so whenever you can have jaggery syrup you can use it in the form of uh, jams on your parathas or as a sweetening reason very very uh, widely used in india for making chickies and laddus again which can be homemade nowadays in market again you get lot of good qualities organic food made out of jaggerys so that is one option which you can go for second is gone this is very very easily available in all the markets this is the food that we swear upon for children they will give you good amount of joint health and good amount of calcium for the kids easiest way to go and give gone this children do not like eating gone laddus i think very few children ki the kaju badam ta kun ke liye laddu khata so very few children who will end up eating a gone laddu easiest way to is to just soak it overnight or just soak it in the morning and throughout the day any time just give it a sip of just half cup of water and that's enough that helps them to you know improve their digestive system so whatever food that they have that will be easily digested with gone kandan roots again this season you will see variety of uh, vegetables the market is flooded with colorful vegetables and colorful fruits so give all the fruits in different different form in the pav bhaji form ya parotha ya cutlets or just make dry roasted chips and give them so these all things are where children love eating okay so you can end up giving all of these things lastly the sesame seeds now sesame seeds mein jaise white hum log use karte hain similarly you can use your black sesame seeds also sesame is til okay tirache ladu which is very common til you can give it in roasted form the uh, the nutritive value increases when you roast the sesame seeds okay so when you give that you can do it in any form you can just make chutneys out of it laddus out of it chickies simplest form if children don't like it just roast it make a powder out of it and then you can add to their regular parathas or dals to the veggies that you add this will boost up the calcium levels on a very high note sesame seeds are known to have the highest form of highest content of calcium so it is very important to give kids on a regular basis for their strong gums and growing bones also carrots carrots apan sage sangto doye changle hatil carrots kha carrots kha this is the season where you get the best quality carrots again you can give them in any form raw pureed sauteed or juice you get baby carrots also which can just be sauteed in little butter with pepper and all and you can just give them that that is again the healthiest form to give them which they well children generally enjoy having carrots so you can give them that okay two to three golden rules that you should always follow may it be any season winter summers rainy any season okay the first and foremost rule that you have to follow is you have to have seasonal and locally grown veggies and fruits please do not go for foods that is packed or processed or veggies that we get in the market which are packed from the supermarkets generally buy your fruits and veggies from the thele walas that are there locally into your areas because they will not put or add any preservatives to the food that they sell they can't afford it right so you will always end up buying fresh fruits and veggies from them secondly always eat fresh fruit in this season always try to eat which is made and eat, uh, served to you directly so subah manao sham ko khao that's still okay but try to avoid having stale food in this season not for this season but always okay keep yourself hydrated this is a season where children generally uh, have very less quantity of water so have lot of water in any form you can have it in soups you can form it in you can have it in the form of juices you can have it in the form of mixed water just i told you gond water jaggery water so you can have that in any form okay again most important is exercise the doctor sara told you movements are very very important in this season children end up eating more so for them physical activity is very important it is not only exercise but any kind of activity which children love doing is most important for them in this season 
Yeah, and I would like to end up. It is the best season to be comfortable, where enjoy food with everyone, be cozy, and spend good family time with each other. Okay. So these are the four to five foods which I would like to say that you have to give this to your children, other than the balanced other food that you give them. So these four or five try things try to include them into their re regular routine diet so that they uh, do not fall sick frequently and they build up their bones, their health, their mental growth. Everything grows up to an extent. Okay. Yeah. So this is what was there from myself and Dr. Sara. Uh, any questions we can take. You have any queries or any doubts? We can take that. So one by one can unmute and help her. Okay, Dr. Kayur, you can help us with this. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, one second. Yeah. Dr. Farzan wanted to ask something, I guess. He's raised a hand. Yeah, I think he's not dead, Kayu. Yeah, if anyone has any queries, you can ask us, no worries. So five grams twice a day is more than enough. That comes to 10 grams, uh, depending on child's weight. But on an average, uh, we can give two, uh, 10 grams of uh, sesame seeds roasted. It should always be roasted. You can roast and keep it. You can roast and make a powder out of it and keep. Or the way I told you, in different, different forms, you can give them. So either of it is fine. Any of them is fine. Ma'am, is this presentation shareable? We joined a bit late. We have actually gone to the last three slides only. So no worries. We will we will share the presentation with you. Once it is done, and uh, we will share the presentation with you. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, Madam, can we give ragi during this season? Yes, we can, yeah, all, all cereals you can give to the kids in this season. The best that helps and works for them at this particular season for digestion is bajra. You can give ragi, you can give jawar, you can give wheat. But ideally for children, rather than giving them multi-mixed atas, you give them one atta at a time. So you either give them uh, food which is made up completely of ragi or roti which is made up completely of jawar. Don't mix two grains together. Okay. So that is the body. And uh, about that uh, gong, how much gong uh, we should uh, soak in? Five grams. Okay. Five grams in okay. half to one cup. The water quantity you can increase or reduce depending on how the child mm -hmm. takes it. You can add little khadi shakkar to it because it is tasteless. Mm -hmm. Okay, So children may not like having it. You can add good water to it, mix it and give that's also okay. Yeah, so that's also okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, any other queries? Yeah, so Kayur, I guess there's no more queries. We will wind up the session. Yeah, so any queries, if anyone has, we will be sharing the uh, PPT and the uh, with you on mails. So just share your mail IDs with us on the group. And we will share you the link for the same, for the video also. So if there's anything, let us know. Okay? Yeah. It was nice talking to you all. Thank you.